And so we have to be very careful. This past week, your name came up for a while, and the Lord said, be very careful. And I spoke to you, so remember to put Psalm 91 over yourself. No fear, no fear. When God wants you, it's because he loves you, and uh, just watch out where you go, who you're going with. In every situation, cover yourself under the shadow of his wings. Mm -hmm. When you pray and you cover yourself, and you do what God says, before the devil get to you, even when there is something that was released and decreed against you, before the devil touches you, guess what? He has to go through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We are in a very, very, very good place. Today, I had to change the message from last week. I really enjoyed the message last week about trials and testing. We are going to continue, but there is an urgent message that came to me this week. And I want to give out this message. You know, these days, when you get a message, you must give it right away. Because when you don't give it, sometimes it gets fulfilled before it's out of your mouth. That's why I had to text you and I had to tell many other people this and that. Because the enemy is trying to move at high speed. But we will not let him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you ready for this? The Lord let me hear the cries of his heart. And the cry of his heart I hear this week was this generation. The Lord is crying for this generation. And he began to show me where we are based on Luke chapter 23. We will read verse 1 to 2. Luke chapter 20. 23 verse 1 to 2, please. Luke chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. So these are the Jews. They have caught a righteous man innocent men and they brought him to court the holy spirit warned we are in the age of lawsuits the age of lawsuits the enemy is releasing words such as take them to court sue them this is what happened to Jesus. They are accusing him for misleading the nation as if they care about the country. The accusation, as you know, the false accusation. In verse 3, we see that Pilate came and he asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, It is as you say. Now, we have different characters in this story. We have Jewish people, then we have Jesus. We have a pilot and we have many more people. But in the truth, Jesus is a Jewish man. In the truth, Jesus and the Jewish people should make up one thing. Why? Because 
Pilate is a Roman leader. He is an invader. Can you imagine your country being invaded by another one? Many of us, I believe all of us here, we will not be happy about that because we don't like invader. But instead of uniting with Jesus, who is Jewish, they went and united with the enemy of their nation. So the Holy Spirit won. We are in the days when evil is uniting to destroy what is good. Common sense doesn't make sense anymore. All the enemy cares about is to come together to unite against the righteous. In verse 12 of the same chapter, the Bible tells us, now Herod and Pilate became friends with one another that very day, for before they had been enemies with each other. What is the story here? The story is that there is a righteous Jesus, a man who will not even harm a fly. They come, they bring a false accusation, they bring him to Pilate. But after Pilate examined him, he doesn't find anything wrong he did. And so in verse 7, when he learns that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was in Jerusalem, at that time. We are at the time where the Passover is about to happen. It's one of the biggest feasts they observe. So everybody leave their village, they come together in Jerusalem. And so Herod himself was there just to enjoy the ambience, you know? It's like a 4th of July. Ah. Oh, by the way, we are invited to go to Washington, D.C., 4th of July. Hallelujah. So, Lord, hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that. Now, before Pilate sent him, in a very full, he says, I find no guilt in this man. So we know, and we know that Jesus is innocent man. It had been decreed from the throne of God that on a such and a such feast, Jesus will die. It's not a coincidence that Herod came into the city. Sometimes things happen, and we think they happen by chance. It's coincidence. It's by accident. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Nothing happens to you by accident. If you love God and you're doing his will, nothing ever happens without that knowing. So Herod is thinking, oh, here, I have come to enjoy this great feast because his headquarter uh, it was in Tiberias by the Sea of Galilee. So he had come to Jerusalem you know, because of the Passover and the crowd, 
He want to enjoy the feast. He want to enjoy, just come there. But he does not know that his feet have been moved by the Holy Spirit to be there because he had to play his role. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's read verse 16, uh, actually 13 to 18. Luke chapter 23, verse 13 through 18. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, away with this man and release to us. Barabbas. Hallelujah. This is what we see today. This is what is happening in our nation today. Evil is seeking the lives of babies. Kill them. We are pro-abortion. No, don't call yourself pro-choice. No, pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. Pro murder, pro killer. Let's just speak the truth. So, evil is seeking the lives of innocent. Now, our government decide, okay, this is not right, but let's try to make a law that can at least protect the ones who escape. Abortion, you know those babies, they fight abortion. Mm -hmm. There is a story that I will release in a, the due time uh, where I met with my child in heaven and he told me what happens during abortion and how she felt everything. So they, and she found, mm -hmm. they fight because they, they, they are little spirit, they have a soul. They can feel the pain. So she fought, but she was fighting with a giant, and there was no voice among humans to speak up for her. So today, evil is screaming, no, we want to kill them. And here, that's exactly the same story. Release. Release Barabbas. Let the illegal immigrants come in. Kill the babies. But let the evil people, just give us evil. Mm -hmm. Kill the innocent. Give us evil. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Give us drugs. Give us marijuana. Mm -hmm. Open a moral site for heroin and injection. It's okay. But Give us that which is the wicked, but destroy the evil ones. So they cried out all together as one. This is the way for us to fight believers, brothers and sisters. We need to cry. We need to come together and cry because we see them here. When they came and they cried in a unison, their voices prevailed. That's what the Bible says. And in verse 21, it says, But they kept on calling out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. The same time where in verse 21, it tells us Herod, and the pilot became friends. Before they had a conflict, there is an issue between them. They can't collaborate. They cannot meet together. They cannot negotiate. They hate each other. 
Today, we are standing in the same place where even the people who did not like each other, but if their heart is set on one evil thing, they do not care. They are just coming together. Right now, the big enemy uh, seems to be like Trump. Mm. They don't care what they have to live out to come together. They want to do that. That's where we stand today. You want to hear a prophetic word? This is where we are. You study, you see what happened afterwards. I do believe history repeats its earth. In verse 23, 21 to 23, it says, But they kept calling out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. But he comes, he said, I will give you Barabbas. Barabbas is an evil man. He killed the people. He committed murder. He stole things. Why don't we crucify this one and release the one who is guilty? They said, no, no. Give us the culprit, give us the guilty one, give us the murder, but kill this innocent man. Mm -hmm. That's wickedness, that's evil. And in verse 22, he said to them at the third time, Why, why evil has this man done? I have found in him no guilt demanding death. Therefore, I punish him and release him. But they were insisting with loud voices, asking that he be crucified and their voices began to prevail my friend this happened in the past a little bit over 2000 years ago because it was the will of God because it was the desire of the father can you imagine, it's very important to know the will of God. Can you imagine back then, let's try to go back in those days. Can you imagine if it probably there were some women that loved Jesus? And we know there were, there were women and men that loved Jesus. Who knew he was the real deal? By the way, I found out even everywhere they went, it was not just the twelve. There were people who were in his private meeting besides the twelve disciples. You study, you will find that in the Bible. Can you imagine as Jesus is about to be crucified, at that time there were people who were praying, saying, Oh Lord, please come here for Jesus. We don't want him to die. Devil in the name of Jesus. You touch not Jesus. Can you imagine? There are people praying like that. It's very important to know the will of God. What is the will of God right now in the United States with all the craziness that is going on? What is the will of God? In verse 28, we see them crying. Following him, there were some women who were mourning and lamenting. But Jesus turning to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves. And weep for your children. Weep, weep for your children. So they were praying that he doesn't die. But it was the will of God that Jesus died for you and for me. Now, back in the United States, is it the will of God that Trump be impeached? Is it the will of God that all these 
children and be killed. No, 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 no. We need to know where we are. And with this, I am going to talk to us about this generation. I hear the Lord cry this past week about this generation. It's a wicked generation. We pray that the Lord turn things around. And I do believe that's why I'm preaching and that's why we are here today. We will not let this generation end up wicked. Where there was wickedness, we are going to pray for righteousness. Yeah. Where are we hidden now as a society, as a nation, not only us, but when you talk to different people, you see that there are things happening in every nation. But in the United States, in the same way we are a superpower, it's more like it's 10 times more than what they have in other nations. Where are we here today with the technology? We were talking last night about maybe 20 years ago. We had the cell phones, but they were not very popular. Only a few people had the cell phones. How did we do things back then? <laughs> now, you drive a car, you're going down a town, halfway through, after you drove 20 miles, you say, oops, I forgot my cell phone. I have to go back. No, honey, we are almost down a town. No, I cannot survive without my phone. <laughs> yes, you can. How did we do things 20 years ago? We were driving. Right. We had the kids in his school. Use the to be honest with you, I'm going to bring a message that's radical. I hope you don't hear me for it, but I want to warn you about the technology we have today. I want to warn you about the cell phones that you're giving to your children, that you're giving to your youth, that you are using even yourself. Last week, I was counseling with a mother, and she said, oh, by the way, my daughter doesn't have a cell phone anymore. Don't try to call her. I said, why? Because she was no longer reading books. And she's a good girl. She's a Christian girl. But even a Christian girl, she was not reading books anymore because Phone, 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 phone. If we let our children go on like this, parents, what's going to happen to them? I was talking to a pastor, Jesse, our pastor in Thailand, and she was visiting the northern part of Thailand. And this is what she wrote to me. She said, Pastor, People here are so hardened to the point that when you fly and you go to see a family where you're supposed to be with, with them for the next two days, when you get there, you don't see, you see people who don't feel compared to say hi or introduce themselves and they ask, how are you? And these are the very same people you're going to stay for the next two weeks or so. Nobody comes and talk. Everyone lives in their own world. Blindness is everywhere. And the big one, selfishness. No, no, I have to do my Facebook. No, 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 I have to do Twitter. <laughs> oh, I need to send that picture. 
Instagram person. Instagram, a snap or what? Snap a chat. Oh, you know what? Oh, so I am here to warn us parents. Please serve this generation for Jesus. Don't give your children things that are out to destroy them. There are things for sure we can do to save this generation. You go to Walmart, you have a two, three year old and it cries. Where are you crying? Oh, I want the cell phone, I want that. And then you want to make them happy, you give them the cell phone. But you're giving them worse than a gun because this kills the inside. You get in the car, you start driving, let's go to the mountain, we're gonna enjoy the mountain. We're gonna take a family tree. Where? Where? Good parents, this is what they do. Nobody uses the cell phone. Everybody, I'm collecting the cell phone. Give me the cell phone. Because you get in the car, everybody start doing the game, this and that. They are visiting another world, and it's not a good world, because they are visiting the virtual world where everything is fake. Imagination mm -hmm. is station, but a kind that is not good, because it's bringing them to me, me, me. What God wants is not a church. He wants a family. That's right. A family is not like that. You go to a restaurant, everybody, do, 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 do. Now, I was at Olive Garden the other day. I found out they have this little station. You pay extra money, and this little thing is in the front of you. You pay, so you play games. Right. You know, it's not about family getting together to enjoy the meal. Now, it's me playing my own game and being selfish. Shall we talk about this? Parents, this is what I do in my car. When we get in the car, I tell those boys, nobody touches the cell phone. We're gonna put the cell phone away. We wanna fellowship. Or then they cry, man, we don't know what to do. Wait, roll down the window, enjoy the nature. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord was crying, will you save this generation for me? The problem with these electronics, they bring addiction. That's right, that's a big mess. How many people here, even as grown up, realize, hey, I'm getting addicted, how many? Mm -hmm. I have to put boundaries on myself. So how much more, how much more should we have pity and these little children who, know, who don't yet have self-control. Mm. Were you born with self-control? <laughs> no. no. It's something you acquire. It's something you That's get right. as you press into God. And now you give them the cell phone, the iPod, the computer, before they get self-control. <laughs> and what's going to happen? It's addiction. Addiction to games, addiction to movies. They can't read the books anymore. They can't draw anymore. They cannot play with each other. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. This generation, God wants them. Addiction to those games only bring depression, That's right. loneliness. It put them on the path to him. And they get to where they need help. But this is a problem. They don't want help. You go tell them, oh no, I'm okay. Why? Because the selfishness feeds pride and the pride grows strong. Even when they need help, you have a suicidal thought. No, I'm okay. 
I'm okay. Actually, that's true. But they don't want you to tell them what to do. There is a lot to pray for. There is a lot to intercede for. But I was seeking the Lord about these issues that I talked to you about. Evil uniting and coming together. When I was praying about this, the Lord sent a prophetic word which came through a dream. And in a summary, I will say, I see hope. I see hope. In the same way, Evil is uniting. God is calling us, the righteous people, the God-fearing people, to come together, to put hands together, arms to arms, and to unite against evil. Evil is not more powerful than it. Righteousness. No, it's not. And the Lord is said, pray, my people. To the prayer, add addiction. Uh, 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 to the prayer, I'm sorry. To the prayer, I'm sorry. To the prayer, add action. Carry out what you believe, what you pray for. And the Lord began to speak to me. Those who seek abortion, they will get abortion. But listen to what kind of abortion. It's going to be the plant for evil. When you pray, the plant will be aborted. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! The Lord has been warning. That's wrong. But you keep holding. No, I'm going to do this. Well, because that's what you want. That's why you get, but it's going to come in a package that's not going to be for you and for what you believe for. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Even if 
Because it's in their right to like or to not like. It's about a choice. But even in not liking, it doesn't mean you come again. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree with your word. Yes. Thou shalt not touch the anointed of the Lord. Jesus came and he fulfilled his plans. Yes, Three and a half years, yes, it was decreed and written that he shall be killed. But that's now what God has for the United States of America. Yes, yes. That plan is that Trump finished what God has yes. Yes. for him. Of God. 